Hey guys, Micah here from ebikeschool.com and today I'm going to be showing you how to true a hub motor. Now I've got my wife's e-bike here that's got this front hub motor that was never really done well to begin with. It's a cheap hub motor from BMS Battery. It's radially laced which isn't great and um, it just has started to come untrue. So I'm going to true it up today and I'll show you how I do that. Now if you have a truing stand that you can take your hub motor out and put it in the stand, that's great. But you don't actually need a truing stand. I'm going to show you how you can just flip your bike over and then true your hub motor while it's still in the bike. Start by just freely spitting the wheel and checking to see how much side to side play there is. If there's a lot, like in mine here, you're probably going to need to open up the brakes. Go ahead and open those up. Next, take a plastic cable tie and cinch it around the fork or the frame of the bike and make sure that you have it lined up so that it's at the same height as the rim of the wheel. Now you want to cut your cable tie just at the point where it's touching the rim. Then you can sort of twist it around the frame to adjust the distance from the rim. Then when you spin the wheel, it's going to act as a sort of depth gauge so you can check how close or far away the rim is as the wheel's spinning around. This will let you see how far out of true the wheel actually is. Now this truing process will make more sense if we know how these spokes work. A spoke is basically a long bolt, and then you've got this special nut called a nipple that goes on the other end. Now the spoke just screws right into the nipple just like a bolt screws into a nut. And then the spoke actually pulls on the rim and creates tension through the spoke. In this case, these spokes are laced radially, which means they go straight out to the rim. What would be better is to actually have a cross lacing where the spokes cross each other. But what can you do? I didn't build this wheel, this is just the way it came. Now when it comes to tools, you're going to need a spoke wrench. I have these specific spoke wrenches that come for each size, and I also have this universal spoke wrench, which I actually prefer because I don't have to go around looking for each different size of a spoke wrench. But you'll need one of these types to work on your spokes. Alright, so I'm going to look right here at the cable tie while I spin the rim, and now I can see how the rim is moving away from the cable tie in some places. So I want to look for the area where it's the farthest away. It seems to be in this region. I want to find the point, or about the point, where it's the, the farthest possible away from the rim. It seems to be about here. About at this spoke, really. So what I want to do is I want to tighten the spokes on this side of the hub, right? I don't want to tighten the other side because that'll push the rim further away, or pull it away. I want to pull it towards the cable tie. So I'm going to tighten this spoke because it's on the side of, uh, of the rim that uh, is closest to that cable tie. So now I'm going to skip one spoke and then do the next one. That way I'm staying on this side of the rim. Also, you'll notice that it looks like I'm loosening here, uh, like I'm doing lefty-loosey. That's because these nipples are actually upside down. You have to think about the orientation from the nipple. So now I'm going to go back past my original spoke that I did and do one more on the other side. So now I'm tightening this one. And now I can check and see, and it looks like I've made uh, a little bit of progress here but we still have a good amount of, of movement. Alright, so now I'm going to test again after that first adjustment and see where my new highest spot is. It looks like it's in the same region here, so I'm going to try and dial it in. It seems like the middle's about, uh, about right where this vent is, actually, so, uh, or the valve, rather, so that's, that's pretty convenient for us. So I'm going to count three spokes in one direction, and, uh, and then I'm going to count three spokes in the other direction. I'm only counting the spokes that are on this side of the of the hub. Now I'm going to tighten these six spokes. Um, and I'm not going to tighten the ones in between, at least um, I'm not going to do those yet, I'll get those on the other side. So now I'm going to tighten these three spokes on this side of that uh, of that valve. And I'm doing about, uh, about three quarters of a turn or so. Um, you know, the, the amount that you turn these just really depends on how far out of true it is. If it's only a little bit, you know, a quarter turn is enough. If it's really out of, out of true, you might have to go, you know, a full turn or a turn and a half. You know, it looks like we actually made some progress. You know, it's still out of true, but it's, it's closer than it was. Alright, and now that we've made some adjustments on one side of the wheel, we're going to come around to the other side, and I'm going to do that same trick here with the cable tie. And now I'm going to look on this side of the wheel and look for the area that seems to be the farthest away from that new cable tie there. I can see it seems to be, uh, it seems to be about here, about, um, about these two spokes here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count, uh, I'm going to do five spokes on this side. So I'm going to count back, uh, let's do three this way, 
and I'm going to tighten up five spokes. And now, you notice I'm doing spokes that go to the other side of the hub, because now I'm trying to pull it to the other side of the bike. So now this is going to be my third, uh, third spoke here. So I'm tightening these about uh, about half a turn or so. Again, the, the amount just really depends on how far it seems like uh, the wheel's out of true. So these aren't so bad on this side, so I'll do, do about a half a turn. And now if I bring in for the close look, this is actually quite good. Um, it's by no means perfect, but that's, that's less than a millimeter of side to side um, out of trueness, which is, is quite good. And so now there's actually one more aspect of trueness we need to look at, and that's the wheel hop. I'm gonna add uh, another cable tie here just because it's gonna make it a little easier to see. My first one wasn't so great. And wheel hop is, uh, instead of that lateral side to side trueness we were looking at before, this is how much uh, of a circle is the wheel, or is it an oval? So if I come in real close here, we can see that the wheel is mostly pretty round, except there seems to be this one jump, just sort of at one spot here. So I'm going to see if I can come and find exactly where that jump is. That might be a bit of an issue, uh, because it's so sharp, that's going to be a little hard to, to fix. It seems like it's right in here somewhere. Um, see if we can find it exactly. Yeah, it's right here. Um, ah, okay, I see. That's, <laughs> that's actually right where the, um, the mating line is, where they made this, this rim. So it looks like, uh, it looks like that's just a little bit of a manufacturing defect. I mean, this is a, this is a really cheap rim. So, um, I mean, that's not going to be so much of an issue for us. And it's also going to be pretty hard to fix this way. Um, so I think that this amount of wheel hop is going to be just fine for us. The other thing is that with tires of this size, you're going to have more play in the tire than in that amount of, of rim hop. So this is going to be just fine. Now for the final part of the truing, I'm going to start right here with the valve. I'm going to go around and just put uh, about a quarter turn on every one of these nipples here. And I like to start with the valve just so I know, you know where I began and I don't go around more than once. Now, is this the best truing job in the world? No, this isn't like a professional truing job. You know, if you're doing like any racing or if, you, if you've got like a downhill e-bike or you do a lot of off-roading where you're gonna have a lot more stress on these wheels, you probably wanna go to a professional and have this done right. This is the general process, but when you do it, you know, the right way with the right tools, you can get this a lot more exact. For my needs and for a lot of us that we just need our wheel to be pretty much straight and true for commuting around town, this will get it done for you. But uh, if you want a real professional job, then you do need to go to a professional to do this. Uh, this is sort of the quick and dirty method, and it works, but you can do better than this. Lastly, I just want to double check here that everything still looks true, and it does. It looks like things are very close here, so this is good. If you removed your brakes in the beginning, don't forget to put those back on. Um, remember to thank any little helpers you might have had. And then just go ahead and flip your bike back over. And that's really all there is to it. It's not a complicated process. Alright, I hope that video was helpful for you guys. If it was, I'd appreciate it if you'd give me a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, just hit the subscribe button and you'll get a notification when I post new videos. Thanks for watching.